their windows were dark. No one knew he was there. All the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one. The old Grinchy Claws hissed as he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it then, so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a minute or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue where the little who stockings hung all in a row. These stockings, he grinched, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present. Popguns, pampoonas, pantoukas and drums, checkerboards, bistle dinks, popcorn and plums. Then he stuffed them in bags. Then the crimp very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. You're a vile one, Mr. Grinch. You have termites in your smile. You have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Given the choice between the two of you, I'd take the um, seasick crocodile. You're a rotter, Mr. Grinch. You're the king of sinful sots. You're a heart so dead tomato clutched with moldy purple spots, Mr. Grinch. You're a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. <laughs> the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took the last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. Now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. <laughs> <laughs> 